all right, let's try and revise all of Waves in six minutes. If you haven't seen my in-depth videos on Waves, then have a look at the playlist, link in description. And all of my completed mind maps are available to download in PDF form, link in the description. So the first thing you need to know is that Waves transfer energy without transferring matter. And there are two types, transverse and longitudinal. Longitudinal is when the particles involved in the wave are oscillating parallel to the direction of energy transfer. And of course, they're made up of compressions and rarefactions, e.g. sound waves. Transverse is the opposite. Particles oscillate perpendicular, e.g. light or any EM for that matter, electromagnetic waves, waves on a string, waves in water, so on and so forth. So this is your standard wave. This could be time. It could also be distance as well. Usually it's time. This axis here is displacement from the midpoint, which is equilibrium. So where the particles are when they're not oscillating. This here is lambda, that's a wavelength. This here is amplitude. Now it would be wavelength if this is distance. If it's time on the x-axis, then the distance between one peak and the next, we don't have wavelength, but we have time period. Time period is the time taken for one complete wave to pass a point. I'll measure that in seconds. Frequency, number of complete waves passing a point every second. So therefore, if you want to find the frequency, then we just do one divided by the time period. So our other equation is V equals F lambda. That's wave speed equals frequency times wavelength. Polarization. Transverse waves can be polarized by a filter that's just made up of very small lines. This only lets half of light be transmitted. We say it's a posh word for just let through. It absorbs the rest. What we say is that it selects waves oscillating in a particular direction. Interference, also known as superpositioning, when the displacements of the individual waves sum at each point, they add up on a piece of string. This is what we call the first harmonic. And this is when the wavelength is equal to two lots of the length of the string. Draw the second harmonic as well, when the wavelength is equal to the length of the string. So at a node, always destructive interference, no energy transferred at these points. At an anti-node, we have both constructive and destructive interference, but energy is transferred because the string is actually moving. The fraction. So Young's double slit, he had a candle and he had a single slit and then a double slit, which then made the diffraction pattern. He needed the single slit to produce coherent sources at the double slit. Coherent, what does that mean? Well, it means basically in sync, in phase, but the proper definition is waves that have a constant phase difference. We use a laser nowadays because that is coherent. It's also monochromatic, whereas the candle wasn't. And that means just one wavelength. So if we draw a graph of what's going on, here's our intensity. Here's our distance from the center fringe width or fringe spacing is given the letter W. And the Young double state equation is W equals lambda D over S. Where S is the slit separation. That's the double slit, the spacing between the two slits there. In reality, what does this look like? Well, it looks like bright spots with dark spots in between. We also call these maxima, and that's where we get constructive interference. In other words, two waves arriving in phase, they reinforce each other, as it were, so making a super wave. So that's why we see a bright spot. Minima is where we get destructive interference, dark, and for a maximum, the path difference, that's how much further one ray is traveling than the other, is equal to a multiple of the wavelength. For a minimum, path difference is equal to a whole number take away a half times the wavelength. So one and a half, two and a half, etc. Speaking of path difference and phase difference, phase difference is just how out of sync two bits on one wave or two waves are. So all we do is that we take the difference in the time divided by the time period or difference in distance divided by the whole wavelength. So it's just the bit divided by the lot times by two pi. And that turns it into radians. Single slits looks like this. Have a big central max falls away very quickly. Central max is twice as big than the other fringes. Diffraction grating. The equation is n lambda equals d sine theta, where n is the order and d is the line spacing. And we calculate that by doing one divided by lines per meter. So you might get lines per millimeter, change it into lines per meter, and then do one divided by that to get d. Find the maximum order, theta equals 90 degrees, e.g. you'll end up with something like n is equal to 3.7, max is 3. You can't have 
a 3.7 order at 90 degrees. And last but not least, we have refraction. And the only equation you need to be concerned about is n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2. Here's our normal, it's always 90 degrees. Here's our n2, here's our n1. So this could be water and air, don't know. It's worth remembering that air n is 1 for TIR to occur. Angle of incidence must be greater than critical angle. And also, the refractive index of this medium must be greater than the second medium, otherwise it doesn't work. To find the critical angle, all we do is make theta 2 90 degrees, therefore n1 sine theta c, because that's what we're talking about, it's the angle of incidence, it's just equal to n2. TIR is when all light is reflected, because we always get a partial reflection, but not with TIR. So, I think that's covered most of ways. Hope you found that helpful. If you've got suggestions on what you want me to do next, pop it in the comment down below. See you next time.